You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Uh, too often times history just, uh, especially Plains, the history of the Plains Indian Wars uh, talks about generals and chiefs and tribes and armies, and they don't get into the heart of of individuals and um and that's where we connect as human beings is through the heart and and that's where i i, I try to write to well welcome to this house of books we have with us today jerry robinson uh author of a book called the cheyenne story and interpretation of courage and it's uh uh been made a finalist for the High Plains Book Award. Um, and we're going to talk about the book in a minute, but first, maybe, Jerry, you could tell us a little about yourself. Sure, Mark. Thank you. Um, well, I uh, I am a, uh, a Northern Cheyenne. I was born and raised on the reservation. Um, uh, raised, I always say, at the heart of the reservation, which is, uh, for me, the intersection of Highway 39 and 212. Uh, and, and our house was just right there. Actually, I, uh, for my first five years of life were, um, uh, up about where the tribal building is now in Lane Deer. Um, and we moved down to the, what was an old schoolhouse there at the intersection of the two highways. And, uh, yeah, I was born and raised there. Uh, went to school on the reservation, graduated high school there. And, um, uh, First learned, began to learn the story uh, of my people, um, as most uh, Cheyenne youth do, at the knees of um, elders, um, and then uh, among friends and schoolyards and bus trips and that type of thing. Um, and uh, um, let's see, um, as I grew up, I uh, uh, heard, I realized that a lot of the stories were um, a bit fragmented. Uh, oftentimes, I would hear different versions of the same story, uh, of the same events, and um, often wondered uh, why that was. Uh, a lot of times, um, I I would know a, a certain story, and then out of the blue, hear someone tell tell it from a completely different perspective, or with different people involved, or that type of thing. And um, <clears throat> I also often wondered um, what my connection to those stories were, and uh, do recall asking uh, at one point my uh, father and I were um, visiting an old family graveyard up where uh, he was raised on Muddy Creek on the reservation there and uh, he uh, made mention of, of different ancestors who were buried in different spots in the in the graveyard there and I asked him I recall asking him if uh, I had any any ancestors who were famous during the Plains Indian Wars. I think it's something that, you know, uh, everyone wonders about. Do I, am I related to anybody that was famous in history? And the best answer he could give me was, I think your uncle uh, or, or your grandfather, Bill, did something as a scout during the wars. And, and that was it. That was the extent of his, his knowledge of uh, what my grandfather Bill Rowland had done and I didn't think any more of it uh, until I moved away from the reservation later in life and uh, um, essentially be started to become a little bit homesick uh, missing family and relatives and uh, just feeling a, 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 a need to reconnect and um, and that ties in with how I, how I started writing, uh, uh, 
once I started writing, I, I uh, felt an urge to, to um, I, well, I knew there was a story there in, in uh, the, not only the, the, the history of, of the Northern Cheyenne tribe, but the history that my uh, grandfather, Bill Rowland, played in it. I just didn't know what it was. And, um, and uh, then once I started searching, uh, I found out that he was, he was woven through the, that part of, the, of Cheyenne history uh, quite intimately. And uh, also found out that uh, where I was related to much a much larger segment of the tribe. In the process. Mm. So your book brings together stories that you started hearing as a child, actually. And I, I try to I try to tell it's essentially what I try to do is tell history the way that um, the Cheyenne and Native Americans in general told history, which is through stories. Um, we didn't have history books detailing how many wagon loads of grain General Crook had in his expedition going up the Powder River. We told stories from the heart. And what they uh, told stories about uh, courage and bravery and and uh, emotion and uh, and that's what I try to relate in in the book. All of those are very real um, parts of any story of any history. In fact, if, if I may, just that was one of the things that drew me in when I first tree. Uh, it it uh, was shortly after this fight that took place, and he was taken to the uh, side of the mountain to help with a parley between the Cheyenne and the soldiers. And that's well documented as well, very well documented. Uh, several sources uh, make mention of him doing that, but none of them say a word about how he felt about doing that. And on his trip from the camp up to that mountainside, he went through a ravine where there were several young Cheyenne men killed, laying dead. And he had been married into the tribe uh, for 26 years. And I have no doubt that he knew each one of those young men when they were infants, when they were born. And he watched them grow into manhood. And there they lay dead in front of him. And not one word was said about how he felt. So I wrote an entire chapter about that. The Cheyenne word for it is umumatatsasta, which means he felt guilty. And I try to relate that in the book in a way that I've not seen um, related in any, any other history book. So um, I think that that's something that, that drew me to the story was I knew that there was another side that needed to be told. My, my understanding is that this is a story that's never actually been told by a member of the tribe. Not in this fashion. Um, it's, it's certainly been told by, uh, I, I think that, actually I think that uh, any member of the tribe by the time they're seven years old knows the story. It's just, um, no, no one has ever sat down and, and written it in this way, but it's told and it's in the hearts of, of all of us as we grow up on the reservation. We all know it. It's just that we don't know it well enough. And that's one of the big reasons why I wrote the book. It's that um, just as I, when I was a youth, was searching for my connection to this story and, and this, this history of, of my people and not being able to find any cohesive storyline to follow just bits and pieces and and uh, a view that came from the outside um, I, I felt that it was important to share a view that came from inside the tribe and collected all of these fragmented stories or at least significant portions of them and tied them together in in a, in a Cheyenne telling of the story and related that to them so that as a child, hopefully, children growing up on the reservation today, my, my ultimate goal for this is if it gets into the hands of an of a, uh, adolescent Cheyenne who is curious about what their 
history is, what their connection to to this period of time is, that if, if it can help them to understand their history and their connection a little bit better, then this book will have served its purpose. I also have a, a, a secondary audience, which is just readers in general, who uh, I think we all um, crave for that sense of understanding where we belong, who I am and where, where do I belong? Uh, who am I and where do I belong? Those are the questions I think that, that, that run through all of us. And this book, this history, tells the story of a group of people who were very adamant in, in trying to express that to the world. This is who I am. And this is where I belong. And uh, this is the first of three books that I'll be writing that tell that story. And by the end of book three, my hope is that um, anyone who reads the book will have a clearer understanding of who the Cheyenne are and where they belong. The goal of trying to tell the story of who we are, I think, touches in a way everybody who lives here. Uh, now that it's only Cheyenne history, it seems like it's it's the history of anyone who lives humanity. And that's and that's um, my wife was one who who um, early on encouraged me to write, and um, as I began writing and she began reading it, she would say over and over again, "This is a human story. It's a story about humanity." And um, and I, I agree, I, I, and that's what I do try to capture is the humanity. Uh, too often times, history just, uh, especially Plains, the history of the Plains Indian Wars uh, talks about generals and chiefs and tribes and armies, and they don't get into the heart of of individuals. And um, and that's where we connect as human beings is through the heart. And, and that's where I, I, I try to write to. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate being able to visit with you a little bit about your book and about yourself. And, um, I, I wish we could be meeting in person, uh, you know, at a live event in the bookstore, but uh, maybe one day we'll have a chance to do that. I, I would enjoy that. Yes. Yeah. Well, so long then. Yeah, ish. Thank you. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.